I find that the jobs that often need this sort of compassion, they don't pay well. You have to do it for the love. Do you know what I mean? And the life I want to live is a a rich one. Hi guys and welcome to the Trident Podcast, where we'll be discussing all things from millennial struggles to relationships and love and everything in between. I'm Kadisha. I'm Jade. And I'm Maya. Good to be here. We just had Christmas. We did. How is you guys' Christmas? Nothing Meh. special. Yeah, it's not a biggie for me whatsoever. Do you know what I did realise? Christmas isn't a biggie for me whatsoever, so it was fine. But I realised that a lot of people try and play down how excited they get for Christmas because people actually get proper excited. I didn't realise people still do because I think everyone's like me and they're clearly not. And because they're getting excited, they then have high expectations. When you have expectations, you're likely to be disappointed. Mm. If you don't have expectations, you'll be fine. So I didn't have any expectations and I was absolutely fine. But I know loads of people have them. Even if they don't think they do, they do. And they're like, oh my God, it was shit because they expected or hoped mm. or wanted. You can't have any of that. Mm. It's, guess- a lot, it's a lot of hard work for one day. Horrible. Honestly. <clears throat> that's why I'm never usually here. People just go, yeah, I, want, I really want to try going away for Christmas. Thank you. You can come with me next year because I'm not going to be here again. Okay, we'll see what my bank account says. <laughs> you got a book in like Oct. Okay. That's I might be away then. You'll be away in Ox? Yeah, I'm going to Jamaica. Oh, okay. Well, then you we haven't decided to... if we're going September or October. Well, then you won't be able to afford to go away in Des as well. Unless you do just do like That's I did last saying. year, which was a cheeky tenor reef. That was only like two bill. Okay, maybe. Yeah. I'm going Malta in March. Oh, really? It was a Christmas present. Wow. Oh, oh, my God. Your well, Christmas right? was good then. Yeah. <laughs> oh my no, God. not really. The day was just like I just see. I went to um, Bedford, which is where yes. half of my family's from. Uh, seen my granddad and um, his wife and her family, and then I seen some of my cousins and stuff. It was an alright day. I've not been to Bedford in I don't know, maybe five years for Christmas. It's been a long time. It's just not the same. Like the whole family doesn't really get together. Like everyone's sort of just doing their own thing, and it's sort of like a come if you want type vibe, yeah. which is not. Mm-hmm. Uh, what you and, wanted yeah and I don't really like invites like that I, mm. I want to be wanted do you know mm. what I mean like I want you to say I want you here make sure you're here not come if you want because then when I do go and I feel like a spare part it's my own fault because I came because I wanted to do you know what I mean it's not 100%. Because, so yeah I'm I'm happy it's over I'm, I'm looking forward to 2020 I'm looking forward to New Year's and then next year we'll cross this bridge again are you turning up for New Year's I am where are you going I always go out for New Year's New Year's is a biggie for you yeah it is it really is because normally I always have goals that mm. I'm gonna that I look forward to putting in motion, mm. and I just look forward to like I know that you shouldn't wait till January first to have a fresh start, but I do. Yeah, yeah, it's easy to do it because everyone else is doing it, so you can. It's like crowd mentality. No, not about what everyone else is doing. No, 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 people but, don't. No, I know, but everyone at least is talking about it. So it's in the air. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? That new year, new you bullshit yeah. is about. So it's easy to just jump on it and be like, "Yeah, me." Do they? You feel like I got more support, I guess. than if you start in the middle of March, mm, I mean, I do set goals as I go along as well. But just like I just like having like to me, it just and as well, it's a new decade, mm. so it's just. It just, I'm just looking forward to this one as well. Like, I'm, I'm not really looking forward to it like that, but this year I am for some reason. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, that's good. That's I lovely. Know. That's How was your Christmas, Jade? Yeah, Jade, you was looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, no, mine was, it was good. It was good. It's like the same old, like we, I got like, my, I was pleased that my nephew was really happy with his presents. Like I got him a good gift. What did you get? And it was like this Warhammer game, like this geeky game where you like paint the figurines and like. That's well, nice. But yeah, at least, least it was nice. wanted At least it. it wasn't a digital game. Yeah. 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 And yeah, like. I don't, it's not really about the gifts anymore. Like I didn't, I just literally got my mum to get me what I got. You could like this like face roller thing uh, and some face masks and stuff like that. But I was really happy with them. I was sitting there rolling my face mm, and watching like used films. It oh, I love it. And like playing games, we were just playing board games, articulate and stuff like that. So yeah, it was fun. I liked it. Did you make that? vegan thing mushroom yes, wellington yes yes i did and it went really really well it wasn't vegan in the end because i guess we used we just used like a ready-made like you know you can just pastry. get that roll pastry oh, okay. so I, that probably had it so just it. vegetarian yeah so i think this one was just a vegetarian but it was really really nice like even people that don't usually eat like vegetarian food were like eating it and it was all gone that and, pisses like, me off that's good you've got your own <laughs> shit don't eat my shit i hate that <laughs> that's all how the time I people whenever eat whenever i order roast. pizza with people oh yeah and they'll be like yeah i want this this and this and then i'll be like no, I'll just have a like a plain one, and then the plain one comes, and they're like, "Oh, I just I don't oh, <laughs> yeah, that's the shit I, I hate. hate it. Like my nut roast is expensive to make because nuts mm. are expensive. They are. 
why are you eating that? You've got chicken, this, this, this. Yeah, yeah, Do you know what yeah. I mean? And I even feel that about anything I make because it's not going to be. I made mince pies. Mm. You may have seen it on the gram. You did. And I made the pastry for it. I and then you put love hearts on it. Oh, yeah, so <laughs> Thank you. And everyone's allowed one. I was allowed oh, eight. Because <laughs> this is what I'm saying. You lot will have that, and then you'll go and eat four of the of the packet yeah. ones. Why are you eating mine then? Do yeah, you know what I mean? It's, it's just yeah, like yeah. it's. I've, there's so much expensive it's ingredients greed. in that. It's greed. It is greed. Mm. It is. And you're not appreciating. Everyone's greedy. Yeah, at Christmas, like I was eating bullshit just because I could, and I'm like, it's all right because January when I do this and this and this, it's all gonna fall off. So, but um, next year I'm going pescatarian. Do you know what I realized? And I'm saying it here so that I can be held accountable yeah. by all of you, man, yeah. that watch and listen. So if you see me Instagramming chicken, <laughs> you can get onto her. You can get onto me. I find that people, like for me anyway, I'm a very intuitive eater, so I need to be in the mood for things. And I feel like it's a lot of pressure because I wasn't necessarily in the mood for all of that potatoes and this and that. And mm, do you know what I mean? It but you is, feel like you have to it because is, everyone's there it and is, doing it. Yeah. And you're just like, oh. Literally. Like, when there, there was so much food made around where I was that obviously the next day you're eating the same thing exactly. for lunch and then you're having the same thing for dinner. Mm. And then I passed by my granddad's before I um, got my train to come home. And his wife was like, so are you going to take some fish? Are you going to take some dumplings? Are you going to take... And I was like... I've had it two days in a row. I don't want it again. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like, you shouldn't have made so much. Trust me, trust me. <laughs> and now you're trying to fob it off to me. Yeah. And any other day, I might have taken it. But I had it yesterday and I had it the day before. I don't want it a third day mm. in a row. Do you know what I mean? I feel like our family's been quite good at kind of figuring out now how much to make. And That's we don't good. Have yeah, too good. Much. I feel like turkey, one day in two but... days is fine, but you shouldn't be eating yeah. it all week. Yeah, no, no, no. From, from 27 onwards, pattern up. Yeah. yeah. Literally. Um, I really enjoy from Boxing Day to New Year's Eve. That's like my golden time because the pressure of Christmas is out of the way because it's always usually when I've, that's normally when I've arrived back to the UK as well. Mm. So the pressures of Christmas is gone so I don't have to listen to all that bullshit. Mm. No one really knows what day it is. Yeah, people don't everyone's expect still you to be calm. Doing anything. You're not having to do fuck all really. Yeah. Even if you do have to go in, everyone's like, oh, I'll have a break. Mm. And we know we're going to be off again in a minute mm. for New Year's. Mm. It's just the best time. You don't know what day it is. It's it just is great. Time, yeah. I love this time it is good what day is it today friday saturday Sunday. Sunday. Oh, <laughs> oh my god Stop. see what i mean i've got no clue I know, I know. <laughs> I've, I've been saying all week what day is it today what day Me is it too. today mm. but i like it though same i love it yeah. it's great right um, who's going first let's get in there oh yeah of course oh yeah this is pick a mix episode guys welcome yeah, it is right i'll go first go on so i had a pick and then as i always do i was scrolling through instagram and i came across some inspiration that's changed my mind i seen a, a picture and it said a thread of goals to set for 2020 and but it was in the form of like questions so i just picked three and i'm gonna read them out and then we'll just spend like five minutes on each one yeah okay so the first one is what have you outgrown this year Ooh. um one thing okay forced <clears throat> Interactions Really Of all sorts That's good I need to work on that Like friendships mm. um, Going places um, Even being somewhere When it's forced And I mm. don't want to be there I actually don't have to be mm-hmm. And I just didn't For so long I just thought I had to I had to I had to And I don't And mm. I've just Completely like If I don't want to I won't do it yeah, I think for good. me It's probably Because when I think about Like last year like this time last year, like August last year, I was with like... This time last my, year, August? Well, what? I'm trying to think. Well, this time... Just December. No, August last year. There we <laughs> August go. August 2019? Yeah. Yeah. Or 2018? No, 2018. Okay. okay. 2018, yeah. Um, I was still with like my ex and like in a relationship that I didn't want. Well, I wasn't with my ex. I was just like still in this friendly, weird like thing going on and in something that I didn't like and I was being treated like shit. And like now, in this year, like I would never, I've never, anytime I felt like... I was talking to someone in that situation ship that I felt I wasn't good enough. Like, I was like, I'm not taking shit that I don't deserve. Do you know what I mean? Like, I kind of now won't take any shit that so I would have done before. So outgrown, outgrown mediocrity. Yeah. And abuse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just I feel like I've I've become more know, knowing of my worth and just more, like, respecting of myself and my boundaries kind of thing. Good. That's good. Yeah. What about you? Mine's not that deep. Um, <laughs> I say trousers. I've, <laughs> out- <laughs> no, I've outgrown, like, raving. Oh, oh okay. thank oh, no, oh, wait, Lord. No, wait, no, chill. Because I do still, still, I'm still, New I'm still young. <laughs> I still enjoy going out, but, like, Raving without purpose now. If it's someone's okay, birthday, yeah. of course I'm gonna like go out. But dress and heels, 
Can't be asked. Yeah. Can't be asked. If I have to wear heels, I'm probably not gonna go. Mm. Like I got invited out yesterday, and she was like, my friend was like, um, dress in heels, West End. I was like, oh god, no way. Cheeky takeaway at mine. I was like, <laughs> oh, like, I, but the thing is, I'll, I'll go to like a day party, I'll go to like an event or a mm. bar, but if I have to dress in a dress and heels. I just can't be asked. And 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 before I used to jump at any opportunity, like mm. we're going out. Yeah, sure. Which heels yeah, 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 Now, yeah. Mm, can't bothered. But I do still enjoy going out. I'm still young. Do you know what I mean? I'm not seeing mm. my grandma just yet. Okay, next one. What's an important boundary you'd like to set for 2020? You go first, Jade. <sighs> no, please, you go first. <laughs> I'm thinking. Okay, so for me, it's similar to what you just said. I actually wrote out my goals for 2020. And one of them was... Um, don't put myself in situations that I don't actually want to be in. So a boundary that I don't currently have or that I I think I have, but it doesn't work. It's like very low. Mm. Uh, is that like I will let people emotionally trap me into situations that I don't actually want to be in. But because I'm I'm just doing it for them, doing it for them. And I need to stop doing that because then while I'm doing it for them, I feel shit about myself. Do you know what I mean? And mm. like, it's just draining me. And then the things that I've set and put in that I want to achieve and stuff gets put on a back burner because I'm too busy helping other people. Even just like, do you want to come here? And I'd be like, I know I don't really want to go, but I'll say yes just to people, please. So that you. is a boundary I need to set. Like say no and mean no. And that's okay because... That's a boundary I need to have. Mm. I don't know how I could put this in boundary sense, but I want to, this year, no. I suppose, yeah, it's like a reliable, I want to have a boundary with myself where I don't feel like I need to rely on someone else's input or or anything. Mm. Like, I, there's so much I want to do always, but I always like hesitate and I'm like, oh, I, I, could do, I should do this with someone. And then I, I spend a lot of time trying to source that person. Oh. And then that holds me back from doing what I want to do. That, that was one of my resolutions about... Three years ago, and yeah. that's how I am the way I am now. Yeah, because three years ago, I wouldn't do anything without anybody. Mm. And you just literally life passes by because before you know it, it's the next it's year, true, yeah. and you've missed out on so many things. Yeah, because there's so like there's a one of the goals I want to do for 2020 is I want to release a my own like sports active wear brand with clothing and also products mm -hmm. and i've been saying it since i first became a pt and i've mm -hmm. got like a whole scrapbook of ideas mm -hmm. and i was talking about it with, um, my boyfriend and he and i was like yeah I'll, go, I'll do it with this person oh i'll go and do it with that person and he was just like why don't you do it on your own yeah. like why yeah. and i couldn't answer i don't actually know why but somewhere i've told myself mm. you can't do things on your own mm. <laughs> and i don't know why because i'm like the most capable person one of the most capable yeah. people i know and i can clearly do shit but i feel like I just, I hold back, but, but I don't on a conscious level feel like I don't believe in myself. I feel like mm. I really believe in myself. Mm. But on some level, I'm probably a bit like, hang on, mm. you need someone with you to do that. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So I need to undo and set some kind of something there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I think, I don't know how much this is a boundary, but I just want to put a boundary on like watching so much like TV or like time wasting. Mm. I feel like Procrastinating. Like, yeah. Or just like, even if there's time when usually I'd be watching TV, I could just be doing stuff like keeping up with my Chinese or like doing other stuff or like, do you know what I mean? I feel like there's so many little things that you could do instead of just wasting time. Yeah. Mm. I so. used to, I, that was definitely one of mine, like, probably about a year ago as well. But it was just little things like I had to look at the, it was really overwhelming to be like, change everything now. Mm. That was like, oh my God. But then I had to look at the pockets of time where I spend doing like mindless activity. Mm. So one of the major ones for me was traveling. While I'm on route somewhere, I would always yeah. just do nothing. So now when I'm on my bike cycling, I'm more often than not either making phone calls or listening to a podcast. Mm. And then if I'm like somewhere I can sit like a tube, I'm reading. Yeah. And, and I literally am so, and even in the gym, I don't have my headphones in. Like little things like that, you just got to yeah. be quite disciplined at first, but then yeah. it becomes normal and easy. Yeah. And if you get a diary and schedule your days as well, yeah. that, that will help you because then you'll I'm see, fine. wow, that's five hours of time that I could be utilising, mm -hmm. but instead I'm doing fuck all. But don't um, overwhelm yourself because yeah. yeah. I showed you my diary and you're like, oh my God, you got something every day, that would give me anxiety. And <laughs> also, it's okay to have moments of doing nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, okay. Like, sure. Don't think Definitely that every piece far. of spare time you need to be doing some sort of mathematical equation. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're allowed to just chill out. <laughs> and practicing your bloody Mandarin. Exactly. <laughs> okay, last one. What's a memory this past year that makes you smile just thinking about it? Oh, so many. I've had so many okay, this do, year. Okay, do three. Okay, one would be us on the journey in Thorpe Park. Oh my oh, God, yeah, I that was so that. fun. 
Um, one would be probably. Do you know what I still think of every time about that thought park trip was when Maya was eating. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I think about that all the time. <laughs> I don't know whether to comment or not. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that was funny bar. though. I think about the time at Thor Park when we were there and we were there <laughs> and um Jade was like Jade was like I was like to Jade, would you go on this um on this ride for a thousand pounds? And she was like I'd go on it for free if you wanted me to. <laughs> and I was just like, okay. And then we went on it. And then we went on it again. And then the second time, she's like, no more. Yeah, no, we're not going on it again. Out. Yes. <laughs> oh I was done by God. then. Yeah, it's really funny. Okay, another memory. You guys say them as well a while, I think. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you know what it is? When you go through your photos and then you're reminded That's why of I did the catch up yeah. of my year on my story not long ago. Yeah, so this should be fresh in your mind then. I know, yeah. but I don't want to say the same ones. Why? <laughs> <laughs> okay. One would then be... Um. Oh shit. Um. Okay. One for me would definitely be Croatia. That was such a oh, good trip. Yeah. I had such a great time. Um. Even though it was like hectic and a bit all over the place, but that was that was a really good holiday. Especially like with my two cousins. We've been away before, but it was like to Amsterdam. But this was like mm. really fun, really enjoyable. Be that lovely. was good. Um, Come time with me. Come down with that me. Was a good time. That was a good time. Um, it doesn't have to be us related. Yeah, I know, no. but it's just you have lives company. outside of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mine would definitely be uh, my coding course. Oh, oh yeah. Good. yeah, just because it's an it was achievement. Sen- yeah, and it was a sense of togetherness, mm-hmm. and it was female, and it was good. And on the last day, we all presented, and I was just mm-hmm. like, "Yeah, I'm here for this." Um, a couple of like moments with my boyfriend have been really nice. We've done little things and like jokes we've had, mm. and like just little things like that. Um, well, it's been like just going out like with Malik. Like we go out every week. We try a new restaurant, or we go ice skating, or like try and go to comedy clubs and stuff like that. So I have a few good memories of that. Mm. Well, people's birthdays. I have a lot of memories of people's birthdays. My birthday birthdays. is definitely a smiler for me this My year. This year I had a great well. birthday. Yeah, same. Yours and mine was good. Yeah, 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 your birthday was fun. Yeah. Um. What else? Um. Mine was like a few new people I've met and friends and that. My retreats were good too. I went to see Drake this year. That was lit. Aww. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um. What else? I was going on holiday. I can't remember where I went, but I remember it was fun. I've actually really got a good relationship with my brother this year, which is really nice. Yeah, and moving house for fuck's sake. Yeah, that's that's gonna make you smile, though. Yes, (laughs) that makes me fucking grin, (laughs) grin, Betty. I'm happy about that because that was actually the same day that we did our our um our event with Chico for Emoji Speak Louder Than Words. I landed in my house and I was taking my time because I was like, I'm so close. I live on the central line now. This is great. And the central line wasn't working. Oh, I know. And I had to get like overground this, this, this and that. And then I was the oh, latest no. one. I oh, know. God. But it was yeah, good. I think it's yeah. just like seeing your friends. I feel like it's more like you remember how you feel in that moment. Isn't yes. It? So sometimes mm. it's not even been that I've been doing anything major, but because I've been with a group of people that like I really like, then mm. I've, I remember it really well. Mm. Mm. I've really enjoyed the feeling of complete peace and gratefulness i'm so grateful for so much from like april onwards since mm. my home situation patterned up everything's good i've got i honestly feel like i've got nothing to complain about and mm. it's funny because you notice when you're in that situation who are friends of you because you, you make them feel better about their life mm. so you've got certain friends who are like how's things with you and they're used to you being like oh fucking hell it's horrible blah blah mm. blah but when you're like i'm actually good mm. they're like oh and then the, there's no conversation <sighs> because the conversation is based on your hardship and yeah, them feeling yeah. sorry for you. Yeah. And now that doesn't happen anymore. I can't Bad say itch. I have anyone around me like that, but mm. I do. That, <laughs> did. That I did. I did. But sound not, fun. not in a bad way where they they may not even be conscious of it. Uh. It's just it's a thing where I've noticed with people if they feel like they're sharing stuff of theirs, mm. they feel like you need to share about yours. Yeah. And if right, yours yeah. isn't anything that they're used to hearing, which is negative, and it's mm-hmm. now positive, is a bit like, oh, fuck, like, what's happened mm-hmm. here? The dynamic's changed, do you know what I mean? <sighs> yeah, that's about it, really. It's been a that's good year. For, For me, I seen another thing on Twitter, and it was like, 2019 was one of the best and worst years of my life. <laughs> and I can relate to that, because really? literally, when I... For face value, I think this has been such a shit year. But when I unpack it and, like, look at each month, like, it's been a very good year, do you mm. know what I mean? Like, I've achieved so much... 
and I've and I've had just as many good times as I have bad times. Definitely. But it's like they say, the negative always sticks out above the, yeah. the good stuff. So yeah, 2019 was a good year overall, I think. But um, I am excited for the next one. Moving on, who's next? Okay, I'll go next. Okay. So as we all know, mm-hmm. I finished university and then I was come to this point where I was like, what am I doing with my life? Oh my where, what what's direction she gonna say? am I going? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you kind of got into the conversation of like having a job that makes a difference and like having a job in your life that is making a difference to the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just kind of thought, well, does everybody have to have a job that is doing something that's like changing the world significantly? Do you know what I mean? Or is it okay to just have a job that's you know, not necessarily going to benefit the world. Hmm. I mean, when you look at it in the grand scheme of things, every job has a purpose. So... What about an eyelash technician? Yeah, it makes a person feel good. It makes a person yeah, feel good. That's true. Can't, yeah, because yeah. I know when I don't have my eyelashes on, I don't feel like the same person. Um, but yeah, I think every job has its like place and has a purpose. No like, offence to eyelash technicians, by the way. In it? What the <laughs> shade? <laughs> it was just like, an example, this is like a stereotypical no, thing that people I know you, think, know you but saw even, it. Even down I to like too. a barista in, Co- in Costa. Yeah. Like, What's the shade to them? <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, so, like, that's just like a yeah. menial nine to five that you would think of. Like, when somebody says just get any job, they would probably suggest something like that. Mm. And that <laughs> is retail. Like still, yeah, or retail, exactly. But if the, we didn't have those people, Mm. Do you know what I mean? Would would some something in the world would shift? Mm. Do you know mm. what I mean? Whether you notice it soon or later, that there will be a difference. So, and also it just helps the economy. But I know what you mean. You mean like people like everyone needs to feed the homeless and everyone needs to help be the, a human rights help, lawyer. Yeah, and everybody yeah. needs to. I was thinking this. Well, like, um, have a job where you're like directly like do you know what I mean changing people's lives. Yeah. Do you know what I feel? I think as a human mm. in an ideal world. Everybody should do something, not necessarily a job, but mm-hmm. something in their day to day which does better agree. human existence. Agree, agree. If it's recycling, yeah. if it's like when you go past a homeless person giving a pound, whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't think you need to dedicate your life to it, yeah. but you need to have a conscious yeah. mindset that I'm not the only person in this world. Yeah. And yeah. for me, the only reason that you need to be doing that is because if you don't do that, you you create yourself a bubble where you you actually believe you're the only person in the world mm. and you become so self-absorbed mm. and then it's dangerous because then you don't feel like there's consequences for your actions mm. and then you can really fuck some shit up. Yeah. So I feel like that should be the reason that everyone's doing it. But I don't think you need to have a, a job that does mm. it. Yeah. Just, just could be I literally had this thought the other day when I seen somebody on Instagram and they've just like qualified as a nurse and I thought, imagine people just didn't want to be nurses anymore. Yeah. Mm, literally. Because you have to like have a desire to want to be a nurse and then go through the university, totally. go through placements, go through training. And it's got to be something that you, you know, really want to do. So if everyone just decided, you know what, I can't be asked to be a nurse. I don't want to work mm. those long hours. I don't want to work on Christmas Day. Mm. Then we'd all be fucked. I think as well that the reason that we even have these kind of thoughts, like, oh, do I have to be doing something that like mm. changes the mm. world? Is because A, the pressure of that on mm-hmm, us mm-hmm. because now we know because to be honest people have always been doing mad shit that changes the world like when you think like Einstein do you yeah. know what I mean came up with equations and stuff that mm. could change it but you just didn't know about it yeah. because we didn't have social media to tell you yeah. but now everyone screams their achievements from the rooftops mm. which I don't have anything against because I do it myself but it can put people under pressure and think oh where am I at in my life it's not just that it's that we also see more struggle yeah like true. you wouldn't have never known about the starving kids in Africa if it wasn't for the Oxfam advert but now you literally see posters everywhere you see adverts pop mm. up you see mm. videos on YouTube and you what like adverts mm. on YouTube you see you, it's just in your face and you're true. like shit like I'm here eating this McDonald's and this kid over there's like got a fly on him yeah. do you know what I mean yeah. it's I can't sad I just think, think that sorry are you sure yeah. Okay. The, it's the yearning for your purpose. If everyone mm. was doing their purpose in life, yeah. there wouldn't be a question about that. Yeah. Because you feel fulfilled. But yeah. when you're not feeling fulfilled, mm. then you're like, okay, well, if I'm not getting fulfilled then, maybe if I go and do this, this, yeah. and this, I'll be more fulfilled. And then mm. it poses the question in your head. But the fact that there are people that want to be doing all those years of studying to be doctors and nurses and that shows mm. that we are different and we're suited to different shit yeah, and we yeah. have different. So the yeah. people that aren't trying to be nurses, Maybe they shouldn't be retail, for example, mm. but maybe there's something else that isn't doesn't even exist yet that they're, that they're perfect for. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it, I feel like we have a responsibility on ourselves to find that thing. Yeah. And along the way to finding that, you will be doing better for the world mm. yeah. somehow. 
Because when you find that purpose, it will benefit yeah. everyone. I sometimes feel um, personally conflicted as well because, like, growing up, I used to always change, like, this this week I want to be this, this week I want to be this. When I was in school, my very first job that I wanted to do was air hostess. Mm. But at this point oh, so where I wanted mom. to do that, really? I'd never flown. So I was like, how am I going to commit to this if I don't even know how I am on planes? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, obviously, as well, with sickle cell, I heard that, you know, you oh, might have clots in the air and all yeah. of that. So I thought, imagine I'm like on shift and I just like drop down or mm, something and then everyone's looking risky. after me and I'm supposed to be looking after people. And then I just like got scared out of it. So mm. then I didn't do it. And I was like, okay, I still want to work in travel somehow. I didn't know what else to do. Then I was like, okay, I'm going to be a teacher. And then I went and did some um, teaching assistant experience and then I was like do you know what these brats aren't for me yeah. but then like I still wanted to I still wanted to work with kids in some way but just not mm. in that capacity yeah so then I was like then I changed my job again and I wanted to do something and it just kept changing and changing and changing and then it got to a point where I just didn't know and then I fell into the job that I'm in now and then sort of just got comfortable there and it's only of late like this year I've been saying I want to get into events but I still have this like deep part inside of me that like I have a real soft spot for the homeless people and I'm always trying to do things and help them and stuff and think of ways that I can make it better, even though my name's not Boris, but like, <laughs> why am I, like, why do yeah. I feel the pressure on my shoulders when these people that can make the changes don't feel it? Do you know mm. what I mean? So I'm like, what can I do to help them? But then I find that the jobs that often need this sort of compassion, they don't pay well. You have to True. do it for the love. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And the life I want to live is a, is a rich one. So I have to think, mm. I have to think of like what I can do to make money for myself and put myself yeah. in a situation where I can help these people off my own back rather than do it as a job, if mm. you know what I mean. So it, that's, that's where I thing. feel like, conflicted. From, from looking things up, I was like, so what are jobs that like do good, but also, you know, you've got to get paid well. Mm. And basically what I found out is that if you really want to make like a huge difference in the world by being like a surgeon or a lawyer or something like that yeah. you need to have like immaculate grades from the get-go like yeah. a star like three, everyone and to be fair like i do get it because if i'm getting like surgery on my brain or like my life is in the hands of this lawyer i do want someone that has spent their life's journey getting to that point and like mm. yeah I but couldn't so have had anyone much better. so much affects that like you might yeah. not have got grades in year three or year yeah. 10 <laughs> because you you're getting have, beaten yeah. up at home do you know what i mean <laughs> you could have yeah. been perfect it's for true, it it's true it's it weren't your job but no, not me true. I did think that but yeah so I kind of get it but also obviously like someone could be perfect for it and it doesn't get the opportunity um but yeah and then I was also looking up so like what is like our passion like everyone was there everyone's always like oh well, you, sh you should have a passion you should have a passion like what's something that you're good at and that you enjoy da, da, da. but the more I was kind of looking up about it it's like not everybody has like a passion or like it's something yeah. that they're like always wanted to do or something that they're like particularly like drawn to mm. and sometimes you just have to do something and then like you just have a job or you just have a path that you get into and you might then from there find out something that you do enjoy or whatever mm. more than others or you have that job and then you do what you're kind of passionate about like charity work whatever if it doesn't pay mm -hmm. um and then you can kind of be fulfilled and have money mm -hmm. but yeah it's tricky it's really tricky and i think that because more young people these days are questioning um or like are looking for jobs that are more um like making a difference and things like that they want to have more like purpose and i think maybe because before like maybe like generations generations ago like centuries ago people were more like struggling for like normal things but now that we are evolving as like a whole planet like we are a lot of us are more fortunate and able to then think more than just our initial needs and just what we need now now we have are at the position where we can help others and we can make a difference so especially as you said that like with the internet and everything like we can learn more just from ourselves and so we all kind of do want to make more of a difference mm. yeah it's hard to decide but i hope people don't it feel is. like pressure you know what I mean? It can drive you nuts. I do. People can go really nuts about it, th feeling like their life is pointless. Do you know what I mean? If you're not mm. doing something major, but like everybody, as you said, everybody's job has I like think an impact. we're also predisposed to how we feel about that because I was having this conversation with my mum recently and she was saying that like genetically you hold trauma. Oh, So if there's actually like a, a scientific, I don't know if it's a muscle or some part of your brain mm. or whatever. So like it will make sense that like, the years and years and years down the line when there's people like us for example who don't face the struggle that mm. our predecessors did face we're still out here fighting for those rights and you'd ask why are you complaining like you've got no problems really do you know what I mean you don't have to like fight to be seen or heard really in comparison to other people so you're carrying that because in your genes you can actually feel that 
belly mm. burning of anger or is that not whatever. Just having like morals and compassion, not necessarily. As a person. I don't think so. I think, but they are as a result of so many factors, and I think that your genetics and what your genetic history is and what your ancestors have been through and all that kind of stuff can definitely play down wow. into your how mm. you are in your everyday That's and really like past life. Yeah, that was my pick. I like that. <laughs> um, should I go mine? Yes. Okay, so I've come across quite a few programs which are trash TV, essentially. Mm-hmm. But I've been trying to question the um, the baseline <clears throat> like idea of them. And I'm trying to work out are they good or not. So I wanted to run a few by you. Mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. you guys tell me if you think there's like a deeper meaning and like it makes a bit right. of sense or whatever. So dinner date. Do you think that you can look at a menu and from that gauge if you're going to fancy a person and whatever? Because me personally, as a no. huge foodie, I think yes. If I read certain well, things on a menu, yeah. that will get me going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know I know what you mean. I, I don't know about fancy, but get along, yeah. Because first Taste. of all, it's, it's, it's a thing in common that we have. Yes. You know what I mean? And food is a big thing. They say the way to... Someone's heart is food through their belly. Mine definitely. So, um, yeah, if I read a menu and it said like beef, steak, this, I'd be like, mm, I'm not going to go there because I don't eat that stuff. Do you know what I mean? Whereas if I seen something and it was like vegetarian this, chicken this, fish this, and I'd be like, well, not next year, obviously. And it said all of that stuff. I'd be like, oh, okay, I'm on the sort of same wavelength as this person. I'd pick that one, obviously. Mm, mm. So I think that is the biggest major thing. Like if you're a vegan or vegetarian or something, you probably want someone. Like the reason why you're doing that is probably because you I think I don't mind deeper. being with somebody with um who eats meat. Oh, so then Do why the would thing. you care about I don't I don't eat my, my own because they're gonna cook that for you. But they yeah. don't know that you're a vegetarian or whatever. Exactly. Which means that they're just gonna be they're it's, it's just something that we've got that. in common, do you know what I mean? Like if I said um like if I just turned up and I made um what what's like your favorite dessert? Let's just say cheesecake, for example. Yeah, yeah. Sure. so let's say I just turned up today and I was like, here's a strawberry cheesecake. And he's like, oh my God, I love that. How did you know? Instantly, we're going to bond if we were strangers. Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Do you know so, what I mean? Yeah. You'd be like, oh, how did you know? Like, I love that. And then instantly, we're going to have that bond, even though you eat all of these other cheesecakes and stuff, but this one is your favorite. Yeah. Then... That's like a miracle. That's like one in a million. I feel that's like rare. Mm. I feel like if the only thing on a dinner date is that you can kind of would be a major is if you're both, for example, as I said, like if you're both like vegan or vegetarian or something, it just shows that you both have that same kind of thinking of, you know, thinking deeper into what you're eating or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Whereas if obviously if you're someone that's vegan, you're really conscious about what you're eating and your health and everything like that. And then you're with someone who's like eating steak and burgers and all that, you kind of are going to be a bit different in the way that you think. Mm. But as a general, I don't know. I don't think that, I mean, you can like pies. I can be like a say, like a sweet person. You can be a savory person or like, I don't know. Uh, I just it's do sort of feel deal. like, it, I feel like it's an interesting concept because it, to, to, to tap into that, a part of your brain like the sensory part mm. for example mm. and then match that with like emotional do you know what i mean it's like Maybe. i seen on bbc3 there was a, a show with um young philly and he, he takes this like person to like three different bedrooms and the person gets to like look around the bedroom the person the the people who own the bedrooms aren't there but they get to look around these bedrooms look at the things and get a vibe for what that person might be like yep. yeah. and then based on what their bedroom looks like um, they pick a bedroom and then it picks that person and it's the same sort of concept by yeah. just seeing somebody's habits and what they like yeah. assuming whether you'd get along or not and I then do think you when they pick them they have a date and then it may work out it may not work out but just the fact that you know what you like as a person you know what you would and wouldn't like to see mm-hmm. and this person is demonstrating that yeah, I do think you could tell a lot from someone by like their room or like their presentation of the food, like what they've chosen, how much they've willing to gone out and like do that some crazy exactly meal, like they've just done like burgers. Generosity. What about that one, that na- but, the naked one? I was that was my next one. Okay, yeah. sorry. so but I don't okay. know. If, but, but also, but I don't know if that means that you'd be compatible or not because just because someone's like that doesn't mean that it's not going to work. Do you know what I mean? And do you know what as well? Yeah, that but comes you could see to... some, sorry, you no. could see somebody on the street and think they're like ten out of ten. They're so good looking, and you still wouldn't be compatible true yeah yeah someone could be messy you could be clean but you could still be compatible exactly yeah. but it's, it's based on initial attraction so yeah, it's, your, okay. it's your first All thought right. you're never not going to know if you're compatible with somebody without I spending see. ample time with them but this is just like your initial i get you 
decision maker. I think maker. that food yeah. is a biggie though, because it, like mm. you just said, it shows so much. It shows about presentation. It shows about yeah. practicality. It shows yeah. about independent thought. It shows about generosity, yeah. thinking of another person, yeah, flavors, yeah, yeah. bare shit. Imagine you met somebody sure, and you liked him just from like talking a bit and you liked the way that he looked mm -hmm. and he was like, okay, I'm going to take you out on a first date. Mm -hmm. And then he took you to like- McDonald's. The nastiest place. Like you just thought it was vile. <laughs> your, your opinion would change. I don't think it would. I'd be like, right, next uh, time I'm picking them. I'll take it. Should that's what change. Show you it should that's change, what he likes. Jade. But that's what he likes. Oh, I don't know. He took you there because he loves it. He goes there every week. That's mm. his favourite shop place. He's taking <laughs> it's a special thing that he's taking you. Yeah. There. But like you say that Kazimi is very different to you. But surely yeah. that doesn't change your like the fact that you guys work and that you know. Where well, if he thing. was yeah, if, if it was a dinner date thing, she wouldn't have picked him. Yeah. <laughs> True. And if he was to cook me something nice and whatever, I will be turned on. Honestly, mm. Mm. I don't know. It's essential, but that's how I feel about food. Do you know what mm, I mean, it's a very yeah. sensual thing to me. Yeah, very important. <laughs> so. I've only been cooked for once, and we know how that went. Mm -hmm. I've told the story before. It was disgusting. Oh, <laughs> oh no. we might need to revisit that story I don't know for about the that. viewers and me. <laughs> okay, um, right. The next one, Naked Attraction. You got that before yeah. I could, mm -hmm. and I was watching it, and I was thinking, and I was, obviously you're watching it like this because it's. Fucking offensive on the eyes, just seeing a bunch of <laughs> bunch of vagines and willies without it's, any warm up. Does it come on after nine? Yeah, I hope oh. so. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've only it watched does. it once on catch up. Oh my god, I was watching. Have you ever? Know, I've watched it a few times, and I'll be honest. Every time I watch it, initially you're like, oh, and then eventually you're like, okay, it's fucking. We've all got them, but it's just the concept. And I was watching, it and I was thinking, it makes sense mm -hmm. because animalistically, mm -hmm. you can't help it. Mm. You'd go, you'd, you can't, literally you, That is what, even when we're fully clothed And we see someone we like and whatever It's our animal instinct that's telling us That's good looking Because we've sized that up, we've looked at that And we've thought, oh, maybe there's, okay And we've we've done the maths, do you know yeah. what I mean? So if you're just getting straight to it You're cutting out the middle guy I guess, yeah I mean, obviously it's important to be sexually attracted to someone Obviously their body they is part of that they don't show you their face, that. do they? they don't show the end. Face, yeah. Your it's sexual the organs, that's it Yeah so that's it's not sexually attracted. That's down. like that's just like uh, like yeah. You can, can be sexually attracted mate? to someone's body. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so you don't know if you're compatible. Yeah, for sure. But I guess it's obviously that's just like we said before. Like, that's just the first stage. Obviously, after that, then they go out on a date, and then you see if there's more to that. But yeah. I do feel like I don't know. I yeah, think that, that, that the, the date is going to be predisposed to go better. Because you know what's yeah, underneath. Yeah, I feel you're more comfortable because you've obviously seen each other bloody naked and had a hug when you've been like... Naked. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's comfortability for sure. And second, because you you already know the goods. Do you know oh what I mean? Oh, God. On a date, oh. you don't know. So if, if he does something like pick his nose and you don't even know if he's got anything good down there, you're like, oh. But if he picks his nose, you might let it off if, if you know he's... Do you know what I mean? You don't know. You might. I think I, I get what you mean because to be honest, there was one time I went out with this guy. Oh my god, what's she gonna say? I don't know. You are a bunch of surprises <laughs> today, literally. And like, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit disappointed at like his body, and I was kind of like, oh shit, shit, man, what have I done? <laughs> she said, what have I done? <laughs> And if you'd have just gone on a little strip tease and seen what was happening, you could have taught, you could have not. That's what I'm saying. It does make sense. I feel yeah. like in the yeah, end, no, uh, when I think about that situation, like it does actually matter a lot more than we might think. Yeah. But, and, but to be more, but personality for me it does matter much, much more. Of course. But there has to be a you level. You are I mean, an animal like, like we all are, Jade. Yeah. It is what it is. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Because they'll go for these bodies and the, like the one I saw the other day, she's like, oh my God, yes. Oh. Oh my and she's God. getting too into, it was making me feel a bit sick, I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> but she was like, uh, then she saw the face and by that point, it didn't even matter about the face. Really? Because she's already oh, no. sold the on the rest of the body. Yeah, the face body. matters. Face if you'd seen all of that, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. But okay, that was the That's first wild. bit. Second bit was on Naked Attraction. It was talking about how um, she's like, I like to sing and dance, blah, blah, blah. So they put a bit of music on and they watched all the bodies, the naked from waist down, Dancing. dance. Oh, God. And then it Fuck. said there was a study that showed that 20% of um, women or whatever find men that can dance way more attractive. Yeah. Because again, it, like in our brains, our chemistry yeah. recognises that if he has a rhythm in his hips, he's going to have rhythm in the oh bedroom. That's hilarious. God. And then I was thinking... 
And my boyfriend's a really good dancer. <laughs> yeah, he's a proper good dancer. And he's so like, I wish I could dance like that. Like he can, he's so fluid with his body and he's yeah. got really good rhythm and ability. And I was thinking, yeah, like that's probably like the only, that's probably the only guy that I've ever known who can dance like that. Yeah. yeah. And he does do his thing in the bedroom. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so do you think looking at like boys you fancied or boys you've like had sex with, dancing is, an, is a factor? Would you even know? No, I'm um, not seeing this fact at all. I had a boyfriend that could not dance, but he was very good, so. I mean, I can see why it would help, mm. but I but don't know. I can't confirm like or deny. Dance, but he did have rhythm. Maybe. Yeah, rhythm. You cannot dance and still have rhythm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But your hip mobility. <laughs> yeah, but you can, you can, you can two-step you can on the beat. You go to the gym and stretch for your hip mobility. Wow. Well, yeah, <laughs> you could, you could. That as well. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I tend to get your opinion on that. <laughs> and there was one more. It was first dates. First date. Okay. I don't really watch that show, but I'm oh my god, oh, that's fine. That's that just where they go on a date and they talk over dinner. Yeah, yeah but they are, like but they are matched. Date. So it's basically like a TV version of Tinder. Oh like right. Like they're matched. Not Tinder. Not yeah, Tinder. Yeah, no, that's um, good. Like a plenty of fish one. Yeah, where they match you based on your. I think that's really blah, good. Blah, 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 yeah. And they go and have a date. And the other day they were showing ones of um, of ones that have lasted who are now oh. married. Oh, that's it was so beautiful. Cute. It was so cute. And they're like, these guys know what they're doing. And I was just like, oh, oh. It's I, cute. Cute. I can see that why that would totally make sense. Yeah. I would be very up for an experiment like that. Totally. If there was like a TV. Maybe, there is. Maybe it's called not, first dates. Maybe not There's TV. loads like that. I don't know if I've got first dates. No, I don't know about first dates. Why? I don't yeah. know. Because people would see. Or what it, about the one? Because if it goes terrible, then. I don't know. I just I don't know. But if there was like a private experiment <laughs> to do that, I that's would. called dating. <laughs> oh my god! Have you guys seen that that um that TV show where there'll be like three girls or three guys, and then they have to impress like the the guy or the girl, and they'll buy, buy them outfits. They have to buy them yeah, outfit with a budget, one. and this then they try it on, and then they eliminate them based on like the outfit that they've been given. Yeah, that's basically like dinner dates. Yeah, I feel like that's weird. But okay, you, that's but that's I do you think that one makes more sense than dinner dates? Uh, I think it's, it's yeah because thing. she cares thing. more about <laughs> no, but she might care more about clothes than she does about food. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the same right. concept. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think they have equal like sense, mm. but I care more about. I feel like I could tell more about someone from like. Well, no, that's not true. I feel like definitely I can the bedroom see more one. You'd be able to tell a lot from somebody by their like, bedroom. Okay, because the way that they're, they're dressed, I feel like tells me can tell me a lot about them or like. I don't know. Um, food. And the oh. final one was Gogglebox. Oh, there's not a question with that. I just think it's a great show because I think the <laughs> idea, the idea of watching their reactions to TV I, is brilliant. I actually wanted to sign up to that. I've tried. Oh. Yeah, they don't, they don't take um, sign ups. They cast. Yeah. They they headhunt. Yeah, oh. I know. Yeah. I googled it because I wanted. I, really I actually wanted to sign up because it's funny. I think I'd be hilarious. And I, it? Yeah, I think I would be. Imagine we they don't got get to paid do a lot, it. Though, you know? They only get paid like seven hundred pound a a month or something. I think I'm going to email Gogglebox. We're a podcast. We see our shit already. Do you know what I mean? We're on YouTube. We yeah. would be funny. You know we'd be another, brilliant. Another, do you know another show I want to go on? I want to go on Coach Trip. Oh, oh no! no. I way hate that. Hell. I hate. I hate coaches. Yeah. Why would I make a trip out of it? And it's like drama. Like people do always just seem to get upset. It's like you've been eliminated. Get over it. Like this is a show that's oh, meant no. for that. I want to go on it. I'm going to look into signing up. Me and my cousin want to do it. Oh, I hate it. No, no, no. I'll vote for you. Is that a thing? Do people vote? No, they vote each know. other out, isn't it? They... Yeah, no, I think yeah, it's amongst themselves. But yeah. Okay, well, those are my things. And I would okay. encourage everybody to look at the deeper meaning with the with the junk things we're watching mm. yeah. just to try and better your head and just be like, okay, I know I'm watching something that's probably killing my brain cells, but... Mm. You know, let me look for the but good in this. sometimes it is good to like escape and just have something that's Oh, like, totally. I love it. One of my guilty all. pleasures of watching, yeah. Oh, if not, can't s- play Take It Away, not that one. Love but I do love that one. Um, no, well. UK Borderfuck. Oh, I knew oh, you said I this watched before. that too. Uh, I don't like I was watching it I the other day. I still can't Take It Away the other day and I didn't even stay on it because I just thought, no. You and what? I thought of your words when you were like, oh, but it is. Oh, but yeah, pay your shit then, pay your shit then. And I just thought, I'm not watching it. I just find the whole show depressing. What is good about that? I love it. It Someone is, pulling up to your yard saying you owe us shit. How are your shit. bills then? It's like I just can't look away. Like it's so horrific. But because I just some can't of these away. people are actually con artists. Yeah. Well, not even some of them. Majority of them. Like I feel sorry for the land. Like some of the things that these people do. This woman. Okay, we've got. 
limited time. This woman, she um had a like a salon and she closed it down, but but she had like a month's period, couple of months period before she actually handed the keys back. And when she went to just like check it over before, like a month before. It's full of squatters There's about 30 people Living in there They've oh moved in Washing machines They've moved in They've plugged in a shower The Jeez. place was flooded There's all of this stuff And then She had to kick them all out With the bailiffs And then um, And then they They were like I'm, I'm, I'm taking my shower <laughs> and then when he unplugged it It was just spitting out water <laughs> And she couldn't get the water to stop And then this poor woman She's got to give the keys back in a month now And now she's got all of this clear up Squatters to do is such a problem Exactly this is Why has she I'm got to saying. give the keys back if she owns the Because she's No it was, a, it was like a business oh, It was like right. a, a property But okay. it wasn't a house okay. And so the squat the, But she was selling it like oh. she, So she'd closed down for business And it was an empty space But she still had like Let's say three or four months Before she gave the keys back to whoever she She's giving it to But she went like a month before Just to check it mm. over And there were like 30 people Living in That's there That's terrible And then they were like Refusing to leave They had bare yeah. suits They had trolleys They had beds there was a, Did I say washing machine? Yeah. I, what? what? Yeah. <laughs> Literally So it's it's a really good show Okay Anyway shout outs You go first Okay my shout out I this week you, you, you say that every week Was it a song last so week? So what if it's yeah. a song? Because I want you to I do listen something to music. more Like what? Uh, food a place. Um, I don't really. An environment, a person, a show. I there shouted a out a show last week. What was and it? I shout... last week? Oh, London Judy. Judy. And I shouted out something <laughs> else say. the week before. Get off my back. Do you know what's funny? How many times a week do I have to tell Maya to get off my back? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Leave a comment. <laughs> <laughs> she um, says it in real life. Too. Literally, everything I do, she's like, oh. And I, I say a show, she's like, oh. Right. <laughs> It's a mm, show It's a song I mean mm, Shock My shout out this week Is Young Bane Maximum Do you even listen to the things I shout out? Yeah, I do and? and I think of you Yeah and they're good I, I'm not there's So not I put you on then Yeah there's Okay not a problem. moving on Jade <laughs> <laughs> I'm still looking up my name in this one I okay. want to shout out Gogglebox <laughs> And if you've got any idea How we could get on the show yeah. On a serious Look how funny we are Imagine us on Gogglebox That's all I'm going to say Okay Please can you Get in touch with me Seriously Tell us yeah. how we can get on Google Box you don't even need, We'd be great I was going to say You don't need to pay us You do need to pay us something Something But It doesn't have to be a lot It could be Lord <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that already <laughs> Lord knows There'll be more than we get Yeah three this. for the price of one <laughs> Yeah um, Don't say that <laughs> so Please Google Box We would love to come on Please okay, Cool all right, and I'm shouting out Street Kind UK. It's like Good. a volunteer group, and we're gonna go and volunteer in March, um, just helping like homeless people and just that like the food shelter. I think Love it is. It. And yeah, so if anybody wants to do some volunteer work, especially after Christmas, that's when people usually kind of want to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll obviously put it in our description, and you can do it as well. And mm-hmm. sorry, just one more to add on to that. I contacted Street Kind, asking them initially if I could give some of my clothes. But they can't take clothes at the moment, but they got, told me another one that can. And it's based in Camden. So on January the 29th in the evening, I'm dropping off all my old clothes I don't want anymore. That I was going to take the charity shop, but I really wanted to get to homeless people. But loads of places said they wouldn't take it. Homeless shelters. These guys were like, yeah, we do collections. And yeah, so I'll put the details of that up as well. And if you guys as well yeah, if you get any clothes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, then we'll just all go. on, um, And it's an evening in Camden. Okay, cool. Uh, all right. Lovely. Well, Happy, Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year. I hope you all were safe and had a good time out yes. if you went out and had a nice time in if you stayed in. Does anyone watch the Queen's Speech? No. Never. Okay, then. Um, <laughs> you? No. Okay, good. And um, we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.